What's up YouTube, Capital G here talking about Regeki in this video and asking the question, do you guys think that this card should be legal? Do you guys think that this card should be banned? And you actually might be shocked by my opinion because actually I don't think Regeki should be legal and I do think that it should be banned. And this is interesting because if you would have asked me this question maybe two weeks ago, I would have told you the exact opposite. Actually, if you watched the video that I uploaded yesterday about how Regeki was winning games and how it was being a complete blowout. And if you watched the duel, you might think, oh Cap, well you're just mad because you lost to it or yada, 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 even though we won that match or it's just because it's such a blowout card and honestly that's not even why i think the card should be banned um i'm actually completely fine with regeki being able to blow up five monsters because i think that we should have healthy you know mass removal in the game because regeki's purpose at its core most of you guys would agree is to punish over extension and i can't say regeki's broken because it can blow up five monsters when cards like torrential tribute can do the same exact thing i mean you can bottomless five monsters technically even something like dark hole pretty much does the same thing but I don't like the way how Regeki does it. I don't like the fact that it is, in my opinion, a skillless card because there's really no negative to it. And just it's costless. And it's one of a, it's one of the cards where it's pretty much all positive and no negative. Um, there's only a few cards that I can think about that have pretty much been in this type of category things like uh, pot of greed and feather duster they're just all good no negatives and even if you think of the most broken cards on the balance you can think of like chaos emperor dragon or imperial order at least even with their all their broken effects like there's at least some small semblance of a cost or of a negative like at least chaos emperor dragon has, has to pay a thousand light points at least imperial order makes you pay 800 granted those costs and those downsides are pretty much a joke but they have at least some condition to balance them and i don't blame konami at all for regeki having no balancing in it because it came out in the first Yu-Gi-Oh booster set ever it came out in legends of blue eyes white dragon there was no balancing in cards it was the first set we didn't really have that many cards in the game so things are going to be ridiculously op and i will i feel like dark hole came out in the same set um and it was a super rare but my problem with regeki is when you look at its cousin, Dark Hole, I look at a card that pretty much does the same thing. It serves the same purpose, but it does it in a skillful way. And I just think there are too many situations where Regeki is just a brainless card that you activate. And yes, people might think, oh, well, Cap, I used it skillfully. I used it against Burning Abyss, and they had Double Dante. I summoned Dweller, and I regeki them, and I ended up winning because their cards pretty much just couldn't resolve. Like, those are just plays where it's like, duh, motherfucker. Like, okay, anybody can make those simple-ass plays. You know what I mean? Like, those are pretty much elementary plays or they had the dark law and i got the regeki and i out like those are really simple play even if you look at the duel yesterday where we ended up getting all five monsters off the board um with the regeki the play that pegasus so did who was the one who actually um you know i was arguing against with this like the play that he did was it really was the only play that we had like going to utopia the lightning if they negate the utopia with the hot red dragon archfiend abyss then we attack over the crystal wing we get rid of that card and then we just set the regeki obviously not throwing the regeki at them for no reason but if they did negate it because they didn't want to lose their crystal wing then obviously we regeki them and just get rid of everything so it was like they all there was only two plays there anyway so it's like how real like how skillful was it when we only had two ways of doing the play to begin with and when i look at regeki I don't think it can be played skillfully because I think there's a lot of situations when you compare it to Dark Hole, which again does pretty much the same thing. Um, I, I think that like Dark Hole actually makes you think. Like let's just say your opponent has five monsters and you have five monsters. Granted, this situation isn't gonna come up very often. If you got Regeki, you just automatically use it. Like bam, activate Regeki, get through my opponent's life points, win the game. You know what I mean? But if you activate a Dark Hole or if you had Dark Hole, you'd have to think. Even if you reduce that to just you both having two monsters, you still have have to think about that situation like you have to think okay how much am i going to lose versus how much are they going to lose okay my monsters are going to float but how hard are they going to float how much damage can i actually dish out versus how much damage they might come over the top during their turn like you have to there are so many variables to think about that and when you have a card like regeki in comparison you don't have to think about that at all and the reason that i compare these two is because they're designed to do the same thing if you summon four, if you summon really more than three monsters in a turn in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you really have more than that on the board and you don't kill your opponent, you probably overextend it. And Dark Hole punishes overextension just like Regeki. Like if you've got a Crystal Wing plus a uh, Ultimaya plus like a Hermitry and you aren't killing me, 
Okay, that's overextension. Regeki and Darko will punish you evenly, and I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, unless you're basically going first, you set up a, a crazy field in which the only time you should be extending that much is if, yeah, you're making a crazy field, you're going to summon like a crystal wing plus like, you know, a Felgrand or a, a number 38, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Yeah, uh, Harbinger of. Uh, what's it called? Tit uh, what's it called? Titanic Galaxy, I think. Oh my god, I can't remember what the card's name is. Yeah, unless you're something like a number 38 Titanic Galaxy and you're making it, you're trying to make this super big board that your opponent can't crack, and then during your next turn, you're trying to kill them. There's really no reason to overextend more than just a couple of monsters on the board because what can five monsters do on your board that two monsters can't do other than kill your opponent, which Obviously, if you're extending to kill someone, that's perfectly fine. But the only thing that having like five monsters would do that two monsters can't do is get over an entire board, which the purpose of these cards is to punish that overextension, uh, overextension to begin with. And the thing about Regeki versus Dark Hole that I think about is I wouldn't be making this argument if Dark Hole was already at three. Like, let's just say that somehow in the future we were in some format where there was just too much lockdown and we needed more spell and or more monster removal and three Dark Holes wasn't cutting it. I'd be like, okay, yeah, bring back Regeki because it's just a necessary evil. It's a necessity in the game at this point, even if it is skill uh, skillless and it doesn't have a cost or anything like that. But that option was never even explored. You know what I mean? Like that, we don't, we never had a point where Dark Hole was at three. So like, why didn't Dark Hole go to three before Regeki ever even came back. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And it's very relevant because when you compare Dark Hole and Regeki, like how many decks actually benefit from Dark Hole more than Regeki? Because I can only think of like a few, maybe Yang Zing, like Scraps and Fire Kings, like decks that want to blow their monsters up routinely. But even a deck like Yang Zing, which is probably the only meta one out of the three, like now that they have the metaphors, they don't even really, like these cards are really not that relevant in that context anymore because this is pretty much just like, like, uh, it would have only been, like, uh, I guess, something that was relevant before they had the Metaphos. When they were, you know, back in the Duelist Alliance, back when Yang Zings didn't have ways of blowing their own monsters up, and they didn't have ways of getting to, like, Jiao 2 whenever they wanted. Now they can pretty much do that without having to rely on things like Dark Hole, which, you know, not only could get rid of their opponent's monsters, but then could trigger their guys so that they could get to the cards they actually wanted, not necessarily cards they actually had set or they summoned on the field. So I, even that, I don't think, is actually relevant. When 99% of decks will instantly say, oh, we want Regeki because it just doesn't punish us at all, I think that there's a problem there. Like, I think if we had three Dark Hole instead of Regeki, you'd still be able to side Dark Hole effectively. Like, it would still work the same way. If your opponent has the Domain Lock, it would still get you out of the Domain Lock. It would still be able to get you out of overextending plays where your opponent summoned three monsters that they had no business summoning, and you're able to Dark Hole them and wreck them because, A, you shouldn't have overextended, but it, there, are those, there are those other situations where you both have a couple of monsters on board and instead of being able to do derp activate regeki because you top decked it without a second thought you know maybe you top deck a dark hole and you're like shit i gotta really think about this now i gotta take a minute and i gotta think about the positives versus the negatives and that's where skill comes in and I, that's something that we should always want now some people might equate this to heavy storm v uh feather duster because pretty much they have the same identical relationship as uh, Regeki and Dark Hole have. And why the OCG has Heavy Storm, or excuse me, has Feather Duster, but they don't have Heavy Storm. I think a lot of that came from the fear of the pendulums. Look, we already know that blowing up your own pendulum scales can be a benefit to your own deck. Like cards like uh, Pendulum Sorcerer. Uh, Draco Slayer, uh, Lester Pendulum, Draco Slayer, and Waver and Eyes have already taught us that. Like, blowing up your own scales can definitely benefit you, especially when you take shit like this into consideration. Plush Fire and Guiding Rodney, which, uh, you know, you wouldn't have, I, I don't think that they wanted Heavy Storm and, like, Plush Fire in the same format. But even if you look at other powerful decks, not just performances and Palace Full Power, but if you looked at a deck like uh, Clee Fort, where they could just play a couple of random scales, then, has, you know, set maybe a card like uh, Sacrifice and Heavy storm get all of those cards in the extra deck and then you know get the scout off of the what's it called get the scout off of the sacrifice and literally just pendulum summon and kill somebody like i don't think they they wanted all of that but it's still essentially the same problem in the ocg like you have decks like yeah, you have decks like Yosinju that play, you know, in the OCG, they play like Feather Duster or decks that are like super back row decks that play Feather Duster because there's absolutely no drawback when if they had to run Heavy Storm, 
I mean, would you run Heavy Storm in like Counter Fairies? <laughs> if you had to run Demise Counter Fairies or Demise Great Key, like would you run Heavy Storm? Like probably not. It would punish you as much as it did your opponent because you overextend just in a different way. Like when Counter Fairy sets, you know, card of Demise or they activate Demise and then they set their like Phoenix Chain, Solemn, Bottomless, another Solemn, and like maybe a, a the stormy mirror force like that's overextension too there's just no way of punishing it in the tcg because we don't have feathers that we don't have heavy storm in the tcg so they feel comfortable doing it as opposed to monster overextension where there are these cards to punish them like i think that if heavy storm was legal in the uh ocg like you wouldn't see those decks necessarily play it because it would punish them you know what i mean so that's like one of the things that i don't really like about how they did it in the ocg but to just put things into context no i don't think that feather duster should be legal in the ocg i think that heavy storm is a healthier card because again it at least punishes some sort of overextension done by both players in the same way that dark hole does and also it's not quite the same because for the most part monsters are what attack monsters are generally what do damage spells and traps are just used to kind of like i guess enable your monsters to do damage and also prohibit your opponent's monsters from doing damage in way of traps so let me know what you guys think i just thought about this for a while and i was just like I don't think that we really need Regeki. And again, it's not, it's not, I'm not being results based. I'm not saying this because you can activate Regeki and you can just clear your opponent's monsters out and win because you can do that with Dark Hole and Torrential. I just don't like the fact that there's no downside to it. I don't like the fact that if you both have a couple of monsters and you get the Regeki, like you're instantly going to activate it. No thought about it. It's just always going to be a positive card for you. It's never going to be a card that punishes your overextension. I mean, if you both have five monsters on board and one player top decks Regeki, like isn't that bullshit? But if you top deck Dark Hole, it'd be like, well, fuck, we both overextended. I can punish him, but I'd also punish myself in the process. Now I have to think about how many monsters I lose. Can I still game him? What are his back row? Like, there are so many different things that you have to think about that. And it's like, that's where skill comes in. And just, Regeki is just a skillless card. I mean, any arguments against that are just like arguments of, I used Regeki skillfully this one time. Like, okay, I get that. But just on average, is Regeki a skill? Is it a skillful card? And the answer is probably no. I mean, may, people might even say that about Dark Hole, but at least with Dark Hole, there are some elements of skill. Like, you don't always just want to arbitrarily blow your shit up unless you're playing, you know, like Yang Zing or Fire Kings or something like that. So, let me know what you guys think. Don't dislike the video because you don't agree with the argument. Dislike the video because you think it's a stupid video. That's That would always be my argument because if you disagree, that's perfectly fine. Just state your reasons in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Explain why you guys think regeki should be legal or shouldn't be legal and again the condition is not regeki just being banned the condition is regeki being banned with dark hole at three like there are strings to this uh argument there are strings to this uh i guess there's yeah there, there are strings attached to this and again i've explained why it's not a skillful card there's no drawbacks at all and i don't think we need no drawback cards same thing you know if, if they put a gun to my head and said cap you got to bring back graceful or pot i'm bringing back graceful man because at least there is there's some small drawback to graceful. It's not just paw, it's just not just pot of greed, activate draw to hurt dirt plus one. You know what I mean? So, anyways, thank you guys for watching as always.